Let's start off with the uh, greatest blues riff in history, probably the most famous, I would say. The song was written by Robert Johnson originally, done by Elmore James. Robert Johnson didn't actually use a slide in it, but uh, Elmore James did. And uh, like to hear it, here it goes. How's that sound? And I can hardly read from here. Yeah, it says sound quality much better than the than the last stream. Yeah, I'm more sober than the last stream. <laughs> all right. I'm live, so all the fuck ups that uh, they're just gonna stay in there. Gonna have to deal with them. do some blind joe reynolds he was a famous slide guy out of louisiana originally but he's kind of lumped in with the delta guys cream covered this song on disraeli gears you know Great God, don't lose your mind. Well, when you lose your money, great God, don't lose your mind. Mm -hmm. Well, if you lose your woman, please don't fool with mine. Watch my old lady whilst I sleep I'm gonna buy me a bulldog Watch my old lady whilst I sleep mm -hmm. Cause women need days, so 
told him crooked might make a bold degree. So taking super chats, I'll read those uh, when I get over there and get done playing some of this stuff. Burning up in here. Here at Ed Phillips Studios, we didn't invest in quiet air conditioning, so I had to turn the air conditioner off. And it's already getting pretty hot down here. I'm just going to play some songs, and then after that, I'll uh, get over there and chat with y'all for a while. I'm going to try to make this a regular thing every Wednesday night. I can't do weekends because I'm always playing everywhere. All right. Here's a song that I believe is a little more East Coast. Probably comes from the mountains of uh, West Virginia, somewhere like that. This is John Henry.
Well, talk about John Henry as much as you please. Say and do all that you can. There never was born in these United States. No such a steel driving man, Lord, Lord. No such a steel driving man. John Henry told his captain. I see puff puff on down there. Is it, am I am I blowing into the mic while I'm playing? Puff, what is that? Puff puff pass. I can barely read the chat from here. But yeah, super chats would really help me out. Uh, I don't make much money on these live streams from ads. Uh, they, they might demonetize it because I have a, a very filthy mouth that makes YouTube really sad. <laughs> and you can also tip me via PayPal or Patreon. I've actually got some uh, levels you can sign up for on Patreon now. Like the $5 level, you'll get uh, exclusive content on there and you'll get all my videos ad-free. At the $10 level, you'll get free MP3s and early access to my YouTube stuff. All right. Let's do some Sun House. I'll do Death Letter in just a little bit. I got another one lined up here while I'm still tuned to this D here. Well, I was in the pulpit 
Stay on my head. <laughs> All right, why don't we do uh, Baby Please Don't Go? It was a big, big Joe Williams, I think, popularized that. It's a traditional song. I, I first heard probably Muddy Waters version and. I think I heard Ted Nugent doing it <laughs> at a young age. up a storm here. Right. 
Time to retune this thing. Mostly use two tunings in blues, uh, open D and open G. I gotta go to open G now. Slide guitar, not, not blues in general, just slide guitar. Use two tunings. for those super chats I'll read those uh, when I get back over there after playing some stuff I'll come over there and chat with y'all a little bit all right let's do death letter blues somebody asked for that earlier if I can get these lyrics right <laughs> sounded good over there Get the sweat out of my face I think I'll uh, let me come over there for one second and read some of the super chats and what y'all have been saying and um, and I'll uh, play a couple more Uh, 
Oh, okay, I can read now. I'm going to have to go up here to find some of these uh, earlier super chats here. Let's see, Gizmodus, $5. Do you have any Blind Boy Fuller in your songbook? Yeah, I, I do step it up and go. But, um, like, I, that's mostly a finger picking song. I'm just doing all slide tonight. That's kind of the theme of the night. I am going to do like a Piedmont Blues episode, and I will be playing some Blind Boy Fuller. See J.M. Price, one ninety nine. Thank you. James Hinkley, ten bucks. Thank you very much. Good stuff. Where are you based, and uh, do you tour outside of your area? I'm in South Carolina, and I, I mostly stay around here. I have been out to Mississippi and played out there in the Delta. I mostly, um, you know, play kind of southeast type. You know, a lot, a lot of Carolina, Georgia. And Sore Owl, 10 bucks. Thank you very much for that. You can see I'm <laughs> sweating here. Let's see. Looks like everybody's uh, liking the sound. Can't do anything about the fuck-ups, but... <laughs> ACDC version of Please Don't Go. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've heard that. I, I was familiar with the Ted Nugent version on Double Live Gonzo, like when I was a kid. Uh, my, my dad used to listen to that. Hey, let's have a beer. Yeah. I don't like to broadcast this on the internet, but I'm drinking Michelob Ultra tonight. Like, and I, I'm like a complete beer snob, home brewer, and I'm drinking this crap. I'm trying to lose a little weight. So let me see. I, I, I don't even, I don't even know if I can get intoxicated on this stuff. <laughs> don't even need a bottle opener. Damn. Oh, we got more super chats here. Can you talk about? Uh, can you talk a bit about how you first came to find and dig this music? Well, I started out listening to like uh, Hendrix and uh, Bob Dylan and Clapton and things like that. That 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 was the first um, kind of music where I developed my own taste that, that wasn't uh, foisted on me by my parents. And I I was asking myself, well, who do they listen to? And it turns out they listen to a bunch of blues artists. I think the first uh, the, the first blues recording that I owned was a, a tape of John Lee Hooker that my dad bought me. I, I was probably, I might have been in my early to mid-teens. And uh, the next was a Muddy Waters recording. It's really old stuff, probably from the 40s. I wonder if I still have those tapes. And uh, I think by the time I got into high school, I'd been introduced to Robert Johnson and I, I I went out and bought the uh, the CD <laughs> that they you know but back when they had those of the you know, the complete uh, Robert Johnson recordings. Well, that that is bottled urine right there. <laughs> Just low calorie seltzer water. Let's see, Steve Price, uh, nine ninety nine. Thank you so much for that. All right. Well, uh, yeah. Let me uh, take a few sips and uh, we'll play some more. Right, let me get back over here on my. Uh, I, I guess you would call it a stage. <laughs> it's not a, no stage there. Yeah. You know. Wish I had a tech person to help with this stuff. But I'm the only one I know that knows any tech. All right. Yeah, loving those super chats. Thank you all for those. 
that's about the only way I'll make money on this uh, this particular video. If they demonetize me or something like that, and they content ID some song, they uh, they turn it off for for me, uh, you know, talking like me and not saying like oh fiddlesticks like. <laughs> Left my slide over there. Let's see what we're going to do here. I got them lined up. Let's do some Robert Johnson. I need a capo for this. We're getting fancy now. It's been a while since I've done this one. This was actually my second video, I believe. Second or third. It's a traveling Riverside blues of a bit of hokum there at the end. Squeeze my lemon. <laughs> Let's see. Tumbling. 
Fucking Hambone Willie Newburn. One of the standards here. close out the uh, the musical portion of the night all right this is a song bb king did uh, somebody did it before him in the 40s i forget the name it's called mother for you and it has a precedent uh even before that uh i, I think memphis mini did a song called uh mother for you something to that effect <laughs> Ain't gonna tell you no 
Like Stephen King, don't know how to end them. All right, let's come over there and have a chit chat. And I'm going to turn the damn air conditioner back on, too. I am sweating to death in this expensive hat, too. y'all if that air conditioner is making too much noise let me know now what was I going to do when I got over here okay I'm going to turn the guitar mic down All right, all right. Make sure my vocal my vocal mic is still uh, working. Okay, great, great. The AC is silent. Well, that's good. It's not silent in here. I sure can't record with it on. And by the way, all the tracking for this album I've been planning on forever is finished. I just got to mix it. going to be uh, 12 songs, about 34, 35 minutes long, so about, about the length of, a, of an old uh, Van Halen record. <laughs> so. that, that's why their records sounded better when they were on vinyl, because they uh, had shorter records. I'm going to smoke a cigarette here. Howdy, Vic Morrison. There are a lot of small venues in the Northeast, especially in college towns. You would go over very well. Yeah, Mike. <coughs> haven't been up there. I've, I've been as far north as Washington. Do I have any more super chats here? Oh, I think that's it for them, yeah. Yeah, still welcoming those. That's kind of like the, uh, I guess, the version of the tip bucket on here. I actually just wrapped up uh, Masters Week. We have Masters Week in this area. Like, and, uh, that, that's, a, that's a busy week for musicians around here, you, you know, playing um, kind of, you know, different places in Augusta, Georgia, and um, playing really, really bad stuff for people with a lot of money. I, 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 I actually, I actually played at a place where the uh, there was a small airport right across the street, and the whole time we were playing there, there were private jets coming in, like just like right in front of us, and of course you know fucks the whole uh, whole music thing up unless you're playing back in the USSR or something. And yeah, just private jets in and out all night. That was the I think that was the Thursday of Masters Week. You know, the, the Masters Golf Tournament, which I had never watched. I don't even know who won. It's like, it's like madness in this town every year when the Masters comes. But um, the, the, the most interesting thing of that week, really, was I was driving across the uh, Savannah River. We were on the way to the gig, and um, there, there was... Uh, there was flooding like below the bridge that we were driving over. The Savannah River was was flooded, and I, I saw the tops of cars like sticking out of the water. It's the first time I've ever seen anything like that. Uh, I saw on the news that some guy actually lost a 1981 Corvette down there. <laughs> so I yeah, feel bad for that guy. There's 
mo- mostly acoustic gigs that week. Nate uh, 2K or Nate Took, thank you very much for that two bucks. So yeah, just just recovering from Masters Week. I I don't have a gig until Friday. I don't even know where it is. Band gig. I've, I've joined a second band. I'm in two bands now. We have the uh, the Martin Phillips Blues Review going on. It's, it's a uh, electric all blues band. We're going to be renting out the uh, Saluda Theater hopefully pretty soon. Still putting in the application. And uh, that would be nice if y'all could come down there for that. You know, if any, anybody could make it. Old historic theater from the 1930s. We're going to be filming in there. It's like still got the old Art Deco, you know, lights and stuff up in there. Really cool place. We, we'll be uh, filming down there and we'll be uh, doing a full show. And uh, probably going to be doing some recordings of some electric material. Well, you know, with, with those guys, we we played at the Soul Bar in Augusta a few weeks ago, which is a place that I think James Brown was pretty notorious for hanging out there when he was alive. So you doing this every Wednesday? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to try to. I have to make it on Wednesday because um, I, I can't uh, I can't do much of anything on weekends because I'm playing places. I wish I could do this on a Friday or Saturday or something like that. But we're just gonna we're just gonna make it a Wednesday show and see what happens. Wednesday night barrel house. Welcome to my electronic barrel house. Did you ever visit James Brown's statue? Oh, oh yeah. I mean, it's just right in the middle of Broad Street in Augusta. I've seen his grave. Hell, <laughs> it's just on private land. You can't just go to a cemetery and uh, and look at it. You know, I I was actually uh, me and another guy were working as handymen slash contractors, whatever, for his daughter. It's right after he died. He was buried in a like a mausoleum, like a raised type thing off the ground, and uh, and there was a picket fence around it. Wish I'd saved the pictures on the uh, crappy early 2000s cell phone I had. <laughs> I, I got to I got to see him in person one time. I never never saw him play a concert, but you, you would see him around town. He'd he'd be at the gas station pumping gas and, and stuff. I, got, I actually saw him through the the big glass window of a radio station that he owned. That was an old shop on Broad Street. I, I waved at him and he waved back, and that that was my one interaction with James Brown. He he was kind of he was kind of uh, famous around here for just kind of being out and about. You'd you'd see him places. He he didn't really uh, he didn't really stay cooped up like some people with that level of fame. Uh, Uncommon sense with Pastor Mark. Super chat for nine ninety nine. Thank you, sir. Ed, you're the best. Keep the blues alive. Well, I, I will try to. It's an uphill battle with uh, you know today's uh, taste in music. <laughs> you ever visit Clarksdale, Mississippi? Yeah, yeah. The one time I went to Mississippi, that's where I went. I stayed at a place called the Ground Zero Inn. No, 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 we played at the Ground Zero Blues Club and stayed at a place called the Shack Up Inn. That was the coolest hotel ever. These were old farmhouses that they converted into rooms you could stay in. You know, rusty tin all over the roof and uh, stuff like gas heaters. <laughs> it was cool as hell. If you, if, you, if, you ever, if you're ever in Clarksdale for some reason, stay at the Shack Up Inn. But, yeah, we, we played at a... Uh, Pretty famous blues club called the uh, the Ground Zero Blues Club. It's part owned by Morgan Freeman. He wasn't there that night, but the co-owner was there. And, uh, th- this was this was probably back in 2018. They put us on a Wednesday night, which was the crappy night. We did, we, we lost money on the trip. It you know it's like an eight hour drive from here. But it was just it was just cool to play there. I did it just to do it. I, I got to go up Highway 61 and visit Memphis and see Elvis's ghastly mansion and all that good stuff and Sun Studios. I, I didn't get to tour Sun Studios, unfortunately. But we were in, in the uh, the little, little uh, 50s restaurant they have next door. And, I, you know, 
got a lot of pictures of that stuff. I I visited Robert Johnson's grave in in Greenwood, the, the, one of the three, <laughs> but uh, this is the one that's apparently the uh, the one that historians believe is the right one. I've got a picture of that. I'll have to put that up when I get a chance. And I've no hat in that picture. I've got like the wildest like Billy Preston afro in that picture ever. The, the wind was blowing like hell. This, the, the grave is at this tiny little church out in the middle of nowhere. Across the street, uh, nothing but, but fields, the cotton fields. In fact, that's, that's pretty much all there is <laughs> out in the Delta is like cotton fields. We, it, it was October when we were there. And the cotton was actually uh, putting out the uh, the cotton fruiting or whatever, and there, there's just just an endless sea of cotton as far as the eye can see. I mean, just to the fucking horizon, it was really unreal. I think they're the biggest cotton producer in the world. That, that part of uh, Mississippi. Yeah, yeah, that that was a really great trip. It was kind of like going to Disneyland for me. I, I think I think people that don't understand music would probably find it boring but uh <laughs> i mean uh yeah yeah that was like uh that was like six flags for me what else we got here uh, sun studios has a great tour guide uh mark edgar stewart who has also released some folk music i, I wish i'd gotten to take the tour i just got to stand outside of it and take pictures the uh, the couple that was with us, my my drummer and his girlfriend, they had their dog with them, so we <laughs> we weren't able to go on the tour. So I, I, um, I after that, I was wishing that like a an eagle would swoop out of the sky and and grab that dog up. You know, also kept us from eating at a you know a good uh, rib place on on Beale Street. Yeah, Beale Street's a nice place. I bought the uh, bought that sign there. Uh, let's see, Poodle Strudel, <laughs> fifteen bucks. Thank you, sir, for that, dude. Your musical references are consistently off the chain. Playing playing next to an airport and referencing back in the USSR. Have you considered teaching a music course at a university? No, I, I don't have that kind of. Um, grasp of like music on a theoretical level i mean i i can pick apart sym symphonies and um because I, i'm kind of i'm into classical music you know i know the different forms they had and um i, I can kind of tell what's going on with that but i i couldn't teach it I'm, I'm not um like rick beato as far as theoretical knowledge of music i mean i i, I took I took one music class uh, in college, like just for an easy A. It was kind of, kind of like the, uh, the the Spanish kid, like you know, taking Spanish or something. <laughs> um, it was just, just just like a basic music appreciation class. I did, I, I didn't even have to take the final exam. He, he was like, "You you can go. You're you're good." You know, I, I already already knew everything in that class. Like I could probably teach a music appreciation class. I, I think I teach one every week at band practice, but. <laughs> Um, but, but yeah, when you get like way up there, like, I, I don't know a lot of that stuff. Jazz music still perplexes the hell out of me. And I love jazz. I listen to it. It's, it's the one form of music that I can listen to and, and just be a stupid fan and, and not sit there and listen to what's going on and pick it apart. I can just enjoy it, you know. I don't think I'll ever be able to play it. Because it's, it's just not something I learned how to do, like jazz, guitar, and stuff. Let's see, what else we got here? Your hat looks good, bro. Yeah, just got this thing. Yeah, Stetson hat. Wanted one my whole life. I, I actually got a, I have a little hat collection. Like, <laughs> it's like, you know, just silly hats. It's just a, a thing I do, and I, I never wear them. I've, I've got a, a, a coon skin hat and a, a uh, Ross Perot campaign hat from the 90s, and I, I got like this big, uh, like, fucking burgundy pimp hat with feathers in it, <laughs> and a, uh, like a woman's hat from the 40s that was my great grandmother's. See, I just I collect hats that I never wear. I just wear this one and the, uh, 
the other black hat, you know, th that's falling apart by this point. Like it's, like it's been worn to every gig. Like it sits in the floorboard of the truck, you know, when I'm riding um, and and I stomp all over it and, and stuff. I, I <laughs> hope that doesn't happen to this thing. I'm, I'm kind of notorious for not taking care of stuff. It, you just look at my guitar collection. They're all like... Um, naturally relict not not the fake way not the poser way they're uh my, my guitars are relict the <laughs> the old-fashioned way just just by being beat the fuck up right let's see uh kenny Bru kenny burel is amazing i i don't think i don't think i'm familiar with him cheers from brazil man i got a lot of fans in brazil I have since the early days of this channel. I, I think a, a video got big over there. The cheers from South Kakalecki. <laughs> yeah, this, why in the hell am I drinking this stuff? <laughs> I've actually got Oktoberfest uh, fermenting in my house in a in a chest freezer. Like I, I've home brewed for 20 years since I was 19 years old. Just um, trying to lose the pot belly here. What other kind of comments we? Uh, let's see. Is cool James Brown live to see James Brown live like that? I guess. Yeah, I I, I saw him like he <laughs> just just not doing a concert. I. I've actually met people who used to play for him. He he didn't pay the band much. He'd, he'd hire like a local yokels and he'd, he'd pay him like a couple hundred dollars a night. You know, and he, and he was uh, famous for having one of the best bands in the world. He people would make mistakes. He would he would turn around and you know five dollars five dollars. Like he would charge people for mistakes and stuff. Oh, freak yeah, bud! Cheers from Canada. All right, well, cheers from the uh, the evil empire down here, eh? <laughs> uh, let's see. <clears throat> Scratchy here. Man, just broke my first spider trying to trying to true it. Or let's see, was forty minutes in and down to one arm. Any tips on setting up a resonator with gusto without destruction or welding cast cast aluminum? Hmm. I, I I've never had the uh, the spider break on one. Like the, the the thing I worry about the most is that cone in there when I'm working on it. But um, I somebody might be able to weld that. Hey, what were you, were you trying to like uh, like tighten it up like or something? Let's see, always learn from your tutorials. You're an amazing player. A lot of great songs. Thank you for that. Thoughts on Martin guitars? Well, that's uh, pretty much about all I play is Martins. Like that. Can you see that one back? Uh, yeah, that that there. That that's, that's a Martin there. It's a cheaper one. I've got a two thousand dollar one in the house. I'm borrowing from somebody. But uh, yeah, yeah I, I grew up listening to bluegrass, and um, you know. That that's what they mostly play, uh, you know, with the bluegrass thing. Um, I, I I like them better than a Gibson acoustic. Uh, definitely better than a Fender. <laughs> Can't stand Fender acoustics. Love their guitars. Well, the resonator back there. That's a Morgan Monroe. I don't even think Martin makes a resonator. If if they did, it would be a million dollars. But yeah, what what is this thing? See, I, I don't even, I don't even memorize the numbers and stuff on my guitars, because I'm, I'm just, um, just, just not a, a gearhead or a guitar freak, believe it or not. Like I, I just pick it up and play it, and if it plays good, then fine. It's a double O, no triple O X one uh, A E. So that, that's a cheaper one. This is an acoustic electric. Well, we're an hour 
we're in. Let's see. Uh, what else have we got here? Just got a D15 Martin and loving it so far. I think that's an expensive one, isn't it? Like a like a really expensive one. USA. <laughs> yeah. I saw James Brown in the 70s when he sang two or three songs during halftime at the at the UGA game. Oh, okay. I I wish I'd caught him live. Yeah, buddy Guy came to Augusta a few years ago, and I missed him. I, th I think Taj Mahal came, too. I d didn't get to see him. I um, Because I didn't pick up the phone a, a week or two ago, I missed uh, free tickets to Bob Dylan. <laughs> I, I, have, I, I did see him when I was 18, that was, you know, like 100 years ago. I'm with you. Martins are the best. They rule. Yeah, yeah, they, they, they do. Gonna light up another cigarette here. Martin makes a parlor. Oh yeah, I, I don't doubt that. Yeah, they, they they do have some smaller guitars you can buy. The, the, the um, that one there and the one in the house, they're auditorium size guitars. Good for finger picking. They're more focused than a like a big dreadnought, you know. What's the best acoustic strings, Edward? Uh, Martin also. <laughs> I, I always use Martin strings. I, on my, my regular acoustics that I play, not the resonator, but my regular acoustics, I use Martin lights. And on the resonator, I use Martin mediums. The mediums are better for slide guitar. They, uh, they have like a, d just a, a thicker tone, you know. The lights are good for finger picking. Played a Cocaine Blues by Reverend Gary Davis. I have to learn that one. I, I kind of know Samson and Delilah. Like, like I'm, I'm thinking about uh, doing a video on that at some point. Just uh, trying to get the vocals down. It's pretty hard to sing. I, I got the guitar down. Are eyebrows considered facial hair? Uh, maybe. <laughs> no, I'll tell you about me. Like, I, I can't grow a full beard. This is just about all I can get is this goatee. I have to clean it up a little bit. You know, shave around it, but I, yeah, I can't grow a beard. If, if I could, like, I'd, I'd have one because I'm, you know, I don't like shaving. Play any Doc Watson tunes? Um, I, can, I can do "Sitting on Top of the World." Uh, he, he, he did, uh, he did that one, didn't he? Um, if I knew the lyrics, but yeah. He, like he, he was, I think he was mostly known for flat picking, but um, he, he had some really good finger picking stuff. What's the benefit of having like really fucked up hair? You can you get to play with it. <laughs> what are some of your musical influences? Well, uh, bluegrass I started out with because that's, that's what my dad. He was going through a, a phase of listening to bluegrass when I was a kid. And, uh, you know, he had been a, like a 70s rocker, but he got into that. He got tired of rock. And um, so, yeah, Bill Monroe, big influence on me. Um, just some uh, different, uh, you know, blues people like Robert Johnson is an influence on me acoustically. Uh, you know, people like uh, Blind, Blind Blake was a really big influence on my finger picking. And uh, oh, let's see, uh, Mer Merle Travis, Merle Travis. I got to do one of his, like pretty soon here. I, I, I might do a Cannonball Rag. As far as um, electric guitar, I'm a big Freddie King fan. I like the way he plays, like his his lead, his phrasing and stuff, or whatever you call it. <laughs> my my main electrical influence, or the, you know, what got me started as far as um, coming into my own as a guitar player was Hendrix. I'm a huge Hendrix fan. You're going to hear a couple of Hendrix songs if you see me play live. I was really big on Cream. I 
you know, I, I, I like Clapton's work in Cream. Don't, don't much, don't much like his, uh, you know, rock stuff after that. I'm, I'm more into his blues stuff. <laughs> I, I, I think uh, '70s rock god uh, Clapton was. I wasn't really into it, but uh, yeah, he was badass with Cream and the Yardbirds and stuff like that. And he puts out really good blues albums. Let's see. Any Doc Watson. I, I'll have to learn the lyrics to Sitting on Top of the World and pick that one maybe uh, one of these days here. I'm, I'm going to do a, I'm going to do one of these live things, but with, but a bunch of finger picking instead of the slide I was doing earlier. So I, I might throw that in there for the, uh, for the finger picking video. Blue Moon of Kentucky, Monroe or Elvis? Well, I know both versions. I prefer Bill Monroe because that's the one I grew up with. I, I actually met uh, Mr. Monroe a couple of times, like when I was a kid. Uh, once when I was five or six, and once when I was uh, like like eleven. He, he died not long after that. These bluegrass festivals, you know, you, you could just walk up to these guys. They they're not like hiding somewhere, like like at a rock concert, you know. They they got the same big buses that they leave running like while they're playing. I don't, I don't know, uh, you know, keep the uh, electricity on or whatever. Thank you, Ed. You inspire me to play harder and practice longer. It will uh, be great if this becomes a regular thing. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to try to make this a regular thing. I'll just, you know, play uh, 45 minutes or an hour and then get on here and shoot the shit for a while. I think if I have about 15 of these, I <laughs> might <laughs> might be more entertaining. I, I don't know how many of these it even takes to get intoxicated. Time for another one. That, that was my first one. Will you play tonight, it? Um, what, what I'm what I'm basically doing here is like the first half of the show is is playing, and then then I'm just gonna do the second half of the show just uh, chit chat with people. I might play a couple more songs, you know. see it have you always been able to progress in your musical ability well I would like to hope so I mean if, if you get comfortable and um, and start thinking you're good enough that 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 usually means you suck like pe people who uh, think they're good enough usually can't play that good I, I'm, I'm like a really harsh self-critic like I mean um, I I hear like every little little jot and tittle when I when I fuck up something so <laughs> I, I think I think um, a bit of insecurity goes a long way in um, helping you be a, a decent musician, you know. Uh, Somebody brought up Lightning Hopkins. I, I know. Um, I, I know. Bring me my shotgun. I might, might pull that one out. Like uh, sometime, I, I'll definitely do a video on it. Yeah, great. I wouldn't mind throwing five or ten for every stream. Well, thank you, sir. Yeah, this um, the, the, these live streams they kind of run on super chat. So, yeah, like um, if you're enjoying this uh, yapping I'm doing, and if you enjoyed the uh, blues guitar playing I did earlier, like throw me a super chat. I'll appreciate that a lot. And I've also got the uh, the Patreon going. If you want to join up with that, you get exclusive content. Uh, you know, two different levels of it. You can get early access to videos uh, if you sign up for the $10 level, free MP3s. And I've also got the PayPal. <laughs> Look at me e-begging here. <laughs> I, I do this in my live shows, too. I push the tip bucket. Like, if you're enjoying what I'm doing here, please put some money in the tip bucket, 5000 See, trying to read this stuff. Um, I'm out, man. Nice chatting with you. Well, uh, you have a good one. Let's see, 
You can lose weight if you just drink shots of whiskey and no beer. <laughs> but it didn't help my dad any. He, that's all he drank was liquor. <laughs> yeah, I'm just drinking some low calorie beer here. I mean, uh, I, I don't, I don't know if it's gonna do anything. I mean, uh, it's, it's basically, it just tastes like Alka Seltzer. You know, I, I, I like the heavy stuff. You know, I like dark stuff. JD seven ninety nine. Thank you very much. And that's what uh, is that Australian dollars? Yeah, okay, yeah. Hey, I always wondered if you wrote songs or are you a songwriter? I would listen to the heck out of that. I want to do some originals. Um, I, I I had originals in the past that I you know I've done. Um, I mean they were probably like badly recorded, but. <laughs> I I think for the next like round of recordings I do, I, I I'm probably gonna write some stuff. I mean, uh, I just got done with this uh, this mythical album I've been talking about. It's all covers. It's all uh, like old traditionals and public domain songs. Just got to be mixed and mastered and all that, and then that'll be out. Come on in my kitchen when you have time, Dennis Cartwright. Ten bucks. Thank you, sir. Hmm. Yeah, lyric. I let's see. I, I did a video on it. I don't know if I can remember the lyrics, but <laughs> might be able to find a paper with them on it over there. Like, I, I've always had trouble with lyrics my whole life. Like, I, I forget lyrics of like the songs I've been singing for twenty five years. That's why I, I was cheating tonight. Show you what I what I got here. Hang on. Got this. <laughs> this, this this giant board here with papers all over it. And uh, yeah, this if, if you saw me looking over there, yeah, I, I was totally cheating. This is my version of a teleprompter because I'm too cheap to buy a teleprompter. But what's what's really funny is what's on the other side. This is a marker board, and uh, j just just to show you that uh, not all musicians are idiots. Most of them are, but uh, yeah, this this is just some good old general relativity here. <laughs> I did this a few years ago and never like erased it. That's, that's cosmology, actually. That's uh, yeah. This, is this a, uh, the A there. That's uh, the scale factor for the expansion of the universe. So this, this right here would be the. Uh, th this is Hubble's constant. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So that's. <laughs> yeah, a little science in every show. Now I got to get this thing back up here. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I I, I graduated with a math degree. <laughs> get my my stand back here. Go fund me yet? Well, um, I mean, I, I haven't thought of anything to fund. <laughs> I, I have most of the stuff to make albums with. Maybe I could, uh, if enough people wanted to buy a vinyl, like I could go fund me a vinyl because those are outrageously expensive. And you you got to make a hundred of them to just to um, like almost break even, like selling vinyls. But I. I I, I'm not. I'm. I'm not even sure if I'll put out a physical CD yet. Does, does anybody still buy those? See, we can't wait to hear your album. I actually. I. I, I absolutely love covers. Well, thank you. Yeah, it, it'll be out soon. I just. Yeah, I got to mix it down and edit up all the. Uh, the fuck ups I made. And, you know. 
let's see. Uh, feel free not to answer this. Do you like making streams? Well, well <laughs> not not on the YouTube platform so far. How much money does a YouTube stream generate? It it is it is more about visibility, or or is it more about visibility? Keep it up, brother. Um. Well, I mean, you know, with these super chats, that's where most of your money is going to come from. Um, you, you know, you'll you'll get a little bit from the ad revenue, but that's that's kind of chump change. The, the most mostly the reason I I want to do these streams is, um, you, you know, for uh, for super chats. I mean, uh, or like the, these um, it, it, it's a, it's, a, it's like a tip bucket, you know. It's like playing at some um, some bar, or some cafe, and uh, you know having a tip bucket. <laughs> it's a lot more um, what I'm used to as a musician, you know, uh, instead of um, you know just running ads on my stuff. But I, well, th this one's gonna have ads on it unless they cut them off. <laughs> and I actually get to interact with people, you know do a little live music you can hear me live uh you know making mistakes and stuff <laughs> wait a minute i am up to 84 dollars that's, that's pretty damn good thank you all for those super chats did youtube takes a third of that I'm the same way with remembering, remembering lyrics. I have a great ear and decent roof. Hmm. Yeah, I've, I've always been bad with lyrics. Like I, I never, I never hardly listen to the lyrics on songs. I'm mostly listening to you know what's going on uh, instrumentally. Do you think math and music are related? The best musicians I've known personally are mathematicians or engineers. Well, yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the way we, uh, the way we tune instruments in the west is like completely mathematically based today we use a type of tuning called equal temperament and it's just based on the uh like the 12th root of two like as far as how uh, how far apart notes are spaced you know but before that they were using a, a tuning that was based on uh mathematics by pythagoras that used ratios so, yeah, uh, yeah, mathematics and music are related, you know, a lot. The, n not just the counting part. I know most drummers can't count. But. Let's see. What we got here? Uh, why would I want to have vinyls over CD when I'm living in a van down by the river? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm still thinking about whether I should print some CDs and, and sell those. I mean, that, that'd be an opportunity to sign stuff for people, but um, I, I don't. I just don't know if anybody buys those anymore. I haven't bought a CD in 15, 20 years or something like that. Let's see. Uh, Also love harmonizing with any music. Well, the vocal harmonizing actually is something that takes a lot of practice. Like that, that's hard to get in a band. Like getting vocal harmonies. That's just something you have to sit down and work out. Let's see, greetings from Canada. Hey, greetings from the USA. Let's see. Well, that was weird. Been listening to your stuff for a year or something. Uh, oops, uh, wait, lost it. Uh, for for a year, uh, been listening to your stuff for a year or something. Then for the past month, I've been listening to Suskin's lectures on general relativity and on cosmology. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, I learned a lot uh, watching Leonard Suskin actually. Yeah, he, he was one of the guys that invented string theory. D uh Burns D Bernstam five bucks. Thank you for that. Well shit, if Google takes a third, I gotta pitch in a bit more. Yeah, yeah, they do. They take a take a third of your super chat money. 
they, they take half of the ad money. I can't believe I haven't got any super chats that were like, um, like really crazy, like like some people do on these live streams. They're like, "Look, Hitler was right about everything." Five bucks. Or, or <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure I'll get them now. See, CD is my preferred medium. Cheap in parentheses. I'm an MP3 guy. I got a computer. I can get MP3s, you know. They they sound like shit, though. I prefer my record collection. Like I've got my got my record player right here, a bunch of vinyls. Do you remember the last CD you bought? I do. It was great. Uh, Anger, Metallica when it came out. Uh, well, Metallica, they were all uh, killed in a fiery plane crash after the Black Album. So I, I, I didn't know they had anything after that. Like, <laughs> I, I, I don't remember the last uh, CD that I bought. I, it's just been too long. It's been, it's probably been, yeah, over a decade at least. <laughs> yeah. So it's kind of like Van Halen. Like, like after they did 1984, they they all died in a fiery plane crash, and they they never made anything else after that. So I, you know. Do you smoke weed? No, that's that's. Uh, believe it or not, you, you couldn't tell by looking at me, but I I haven't smoked a joint in 15 years. It, it never did me any good. Like it uh, just always gave me anxiety attacks and stuff. Dang, Google is hungry. Yes, yes, they are. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Google is one of those big evil corporations, you know. Censor happy, too. I, I, I've had them censor people's uh, chat comments on live streams I've done. Let's see. When my son was about a year old or something, Dolly came out with Little Sparrow, and that got my talent... That that got my latent bluegrass interest going, so then the kid turns out to uh, know how to play the fiddle, and off we go. And I had a fiddle when I was like five years old. That was like actually my first instrument, and I never learned to play it. I still have it too. Can't do nothing on a fiddle. Any kind of bowed instrument. I'm, I'm mostly a, you know, a pick guy and a keyboard guy. That's that's about all I can do. I I can't play a harmonica. I can't you know. Can't can't blow on anything. I suck at blowing. Can't play a, you know, couldn't play my sister's uh, trumpet that she had in in school, like, <laughs> or the saxophone. Let's see. Until now, I didn't know you had started on bluegrass. Your your playing is real, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I I, I grew up um, about the first ten years of my life, like hearing just about nothing but bluegrass my dad had been a 70s rocker and uh he, he had just gotten tired of it and started listening to a bunch of bluegrass and uh, back then this is you know the 80s um early 90s like a lot of the old guys were were still alive like bill monroe got to meet half of those guys got, got to meet the osborne brothers and jim and jesse and all, all those people little roy lewis came to one of my shows uh, about a year ago like when I was playing in Lincolnton, that's just where he's from. That that was kind of nerve wracking. See, first album I got was Appetite for Destruction. First CD was Spaghetti Incident. So that, that's uh, Guns and Roses. Yeah. I had um, which one did I have? Um, there, there was a one and two. There were Guns N' Roses albums. Like, it was a tape, a cassette tape, you know, if you remember those. <laughs> it's like, um, hell. But anyway, th this this tape I had, I actually um, was hanging out with my cousin. And he said, hey, I got this uh, this Jimi Hendrix tape. I'll trade you for, for that Guns N' Roses tape. And so I, well, so I did. And that was the first time I was exposed to Jimi Hendrix. And... That that's uh, th th that that kind of got me going on the guitar. 
I see my dad was a guitar player. He got me started on it. You know, he 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 literally named me after Eddie Van Halen. <laughs> if if you can believe that, yeah. And he him he himself uh, his name was Jerry, and his mother had named him after Jerry Lee Lewis. And I can't hardly play any Van Halen. I mean, I I know Ice Cream Man. I know about half of Eruption. <laughs> but, um, just uh, you know, never had the patience to sit in my room and uh, you know play those parts five thousand times. That's some hard stuff. I think it's true after the first few albums a band dies. Yeah. I mean, um Ozzy Osbourne said something to that to that effect. Like the, the first few albums are the real albums and then they, you know they kind of run out of ideas like a lot of bands. My first concert was Hendrix. What was your wow. <laughs> Damn, dude. Um my first concert <laughs> Um, it was a damn Yankees concert. I was 10 years old. So th th this would have been about, oh, about 93 or something like that. It's when they were still kind of going, but um, th they were playing at like a small place on the on the uh, Savannah River. It's called Polly's on the River. Ten bucks a ticket. Could you imagine concert tickets being that much? We were mostly there to see Ted Nugent. Uh, I, I have never given a fuck about Tommy Shaw or the the Night Ranger guy. And um, but yeah, that that was a pretty cool concert. Uh, th there, there were all these boats behind the place on the river, people in pontoon boats getting a free show. And Nugent gets on the mic and he's he's like, "Hey, I'm Ted fucking Nugent, and all you cheap bastards back there in them boats, I'm Garth fucking Brooks." I still remember that. And I think around that same time I I saw uh Randy Travis, like I think that was like like a you know, country singer my mother was into with Trisha Yearwood opening. So yeah, my first concert was a was a hair band. I kept wondering like why are these guys playing at such a little place? I I hadn't put two and two together at the time that uh you know that uh, Kurt Cobain had hit the scene and kind of <laughs> like you know ruined all those people's careers. Seen Ted at a high school. Damn, that, that must have been back in the '60s. Can you tell my wife April good night? All right, good night, April. Let's see. I did a portrait of Eddie. Uh, I, yeah, I always sucked at art, like visual art. I mean, I, I, I took it in high school, and uh, I did okay at it. I did what the teacher told me to do, but I, I was more of a music guy. Hendrix cost me four dollars. Well, if he were still alive, like it would be a hundred. <laughs> like. Pro probably for the crappy seats. I mean, I, I can't believe what concerts cost now. That, that's why I don't go to them. I mean, I, I saw Paul McCartney probably 20 years ago, and it cost me 100 bucks. Would love to hear a nice old-time piano song from you. Why don't we see any keyboard stuff from you? Would love it. I could kind of play the piano. I think everybody who calls themselves a musician should know a little bit of piano, but I'm not like um, like great at it. I, I just um, I just kind of know what I know on it. I'm, I'm not that great at improving on it. You know, I, I can play Georgia on my mind and a few blues songs and some Beatles songs and things like that. I, I might do a piano video one of these days. Where's the other cool guy with the parlor? You you must be talking about Josh. Yeah, um, well he he's the uh, the other half of the uh, band I just joined. Like we're calling it the uh, Phillips and Martin Blues Review. I, I think he he might be on a few more videos coming up here soon. I mean whenever he gets time. But yeah, he both of those parlors were his. He uh, he's actually got some some resonators from the '30s, like some national resonators. 
th- those two that we were playing were uh, what were they? Uh, well, hell, I forgot. <laughs> But they wouldn't stay in tune because, uh, you know, stuff from back then never stays in tune. My wife and daughter just saw Billy Ellis live. It cost three hundred dollars in total. God damn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's that's why I don't go to concerts anymore. I mean, you, you hear you hear from people saying, "Well, I, I saw Kiss in the seventies, and it was five bucks. It was it was like what what about like." nine or ten dollars a night to go to Woodstock or something and even if you factor in inflation like um, that doesn't match up to today I think uh, I think concerts have become more of like a like a luxury experience or something any stone songs yeah I, I play a few with the band live I have trouble singing Mick Jagger, but yeah, I, my my voice is too clean. Like I've got like this choir boy voice, you know. And what what else uh, we got on here? My brothers have more guitars than fans. I, I know a lot of people like that. <laughs> I, I, I've got like a decent guitar collection, but it's not like, um, you, you know, you know, people buying um, just 10 Les Pauls and stuff like that. Or here's a limited edition custom shop relic, blah, blah, blah. I, I don't do that. I, most of my guitars are generic. I mean, the, the nicest things I have, I've, I've got a, a Les Paul from the 70s, a custom Les Paul, and I've got a, uh, like a, 1960s reissue SG and that's actually been my main guitar lately but I, I mean my strats like I've, I've always been a strat guy those uh those things like my, both of mine are Mexican like they're the uh you know the ones that what well, used to cost four hundred dollars now they're eight hundred that they cost what the American strats used to cost Let's see, uh, 30, 34.4 thousand guitars. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, that's my number of subscribers, I believe, right now. Yeah, I was trying to bump that up. It's because people don't buy records anymore. Well, that, that has something to do with it. I mean, uh, it's, 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 it's hard to make money off of recordings now, you, you know, um, just because of the old, the whole MP3 thing, the on the internet, um, Napster, yada yada yada. I, I had Napster back in the day too. I, I was ripping off stuff. So <laughs> record companies have gotten uh, really really greedy. They're taking people's merch money and stuff to, just to stay afloat. I, I wouldn't even. I don't even think I would take a record deal if somebody offered me one. I mean, uh, you can make more money just putting your own stuff out. Oh, Vanini Guto got got censored by Google. Oh no, that's a message retracted. I thought it was message removed or something. Yeah. Do you play banjo or tenor guitar? I actually do play banjo. I've, I've got an early video on here of me playing the banjo, like doing little Maggie, but it, it was kind of a botch because this the banjo was so loud you couldn't hear my singing. But uh, I'm thinking about doing another banjo and sometime here um i've actually got a banjo from the 1920s this like one of those open back ones you know with the calf skin head on it and i've got a couple of um you know more modern uh, bluegrass banjos those things are loud hard to sing with them i'll have to use a mic next time oh yeah i can play three finger style kinda and i can play uh you know, like the claw hammer stuff. I'm thinking about doing a Doc Boggs song, probably doing like Oh, oh Death or something. Let's see. Are you okay with music pirating or should everybody buy their MP3s? Hmm. I mean, um, I, I hate the music industry. And I, when Napster came out, I, I thought you know that the uh, the whole thing would just uh, crumble but <laughs> it didn't they're still around 
So, so back then I was like urging people to, you know, download stuff illegally, especially Metallica songs. You know, the story with Lars Ulrich. <laughs> but I, I don't think it's hurting anybody any more than um, like, you know, tape trading or, you know, uh, recordable CDs. Like they, they were freaking out about stuff like that uh, before there was ever a Napster or something like that. So I, I don't care one way or the other. I, I'm, I don't, um, I, I don't have any qualms with with downloading music illegally. I'd, I'd rather be heard than paid. You could download my shit illegally if you can find it. <laughs> so I don't care. Um, let me see more nicotine here all right we're getting up we're getting up on almost two hours here you go camping play your guitar uh, <laughs> yeah yeah I, I like a little bit of outdoor stuff. Any rhyme or reason to which of your videos get popular? Actually, no. <laughs> I, I have not found the formula yet. Like the, the ones that do blow up and get really big, they they seem to be just um, just random. I think just YouTube's algorithm just decides, hey, I'm going to push this for whatever reason. Um, when the levy breaks, like last year, that surprised me. That got up to a hundred thousand or, or some odd views like that. When I first started this channel, I put out Crossroads. That was my first video, and I I did like one or two more, I think. And they they didn't really get much of anything on views. And then a, a year later, I came back, and they they just exploded. And that was when I I really uh you know got working more on the channel. But it was just random. Like, I, I I don't know what happened to make him just blow up all of a sudden, you know. And some of the videos I work the hardest on, like the ones where I have to do all the editing, like the little mini docs and stuff, they, uh, some of those get, like, nothing. Like, they underperform, you know. Have you met Mike Marshall? I don't think I'm familiar with him. I'm from La Roja, Argentina, and I love your style. Well, thank you, sir. Do you have a manager? I kind of, sort of, in a weird way. Like, um, I, I usually make other people in my band book stuff. <laughs> <laughs> like my, my drummer books all the gigs. I, I I don't even know where I'm playing for from one week to the next. I I just I don't like doing the booking thing. I'm I'm not a salesman. Let's see. Uh, um, it 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 ting yeah <laughs> yeah editing sucks. I hate editing. That Sunhouse Doc is excellent filmmaking. Some of us appreciate your hard work. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah the last one I did was the Willie McTell documentary uh, when we uh, went down and interviewed the guy, and that took me forever to edit, and I had to clean up the sound because the, the lav mics were all fucking up and stuff. And that, that one actually underperformed. You know, I'm working on a probably a slightly shorter one right now, on um pink anderson like I, I still got to do some some filming for that but I've, I've got the voiceover recorded like a uh, pink anderson was the pink and pink floyd he, he was a beadmont blues singer from uh, south carolina from spartanburg and yeah i'm going to talk about him a little bit and play one of his songs what do you think of uh, aj gent i don't think i'm too familiar with his work Are you planning to open a teaching channel? I, I think any teaching I do on here, like um, it'll probably be on this channel. Just n never been a great guitar teacher because I, I don't really remember exactly how I learned. I, I've never offered my services as a guitar teacher. Never. I mean, I I might have done it once or twice when I was younger. I think yeah, I did. 
but um like it was usually like ended up being like one session <laughs> i'm just like play this like, oh, we can't well, well well why can't you just play it like fuck <laughs> you know um but i mean i you know i did the uh the kind of intro to slide guitar video and that 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 did okay I mean, I, I might teach people to play a few, few blues songs or something. Um, I, I just, um, I, I gotta, you know, I gotta work out what I'm gonna actually tell people, like what, what kind of methodology I'm gonna use. <laughs> it, it, it would have to be something that's assuming that you already know how to play guitar. If you're gonna get into like uh, this old blues stuff, um, you're gonna have, you probably have to know the basics first. Well, your history of blues is uh, teaching, and that has been very interesting. Oh, oh, is that what you meant? Like the teaching, like just a history teaching? Yeah, I'm really good about, um, you know, babbling about history. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to do plenty more of that. Let's see. Thanks a lot for your work. Regards from a big fan living in a small farm in South Brazil. Oh yeah, I, I had a Spanish teacher like he, like who who lived in Brazil for a long time, and he had uh, sometimes he would like accidentally teach us Portuguese because that that's was spoken in Brazil, and um, and he would come to school and dress up as a gaucho and do like little gaucho guitar shows and <laughs> and stuff and. He he let us drink this uh, this tea that they drink. It's called a mache or something. I think that's, yeah, that's when I was in middle school. All right. Well, let's see. Thanks a lot for your work. Okay, I just read that. Hmm. Gaucho. We have a painting of a gaucho on the wall. Yeah, that, I remember the the guy having like big flared blue pants, like <laughs> like when he would dress up that way. Um. Yeah, we're we're, we're getting up on like a uh, two hours here. I have to tell you what. I'm at 89 bucks in super chats. If y'all can get me over a hundred, which YouTube will take a third of, I'll do another song for y'all, and then we'll call it a night. You play any SRV? Yeah, I, I actually do with the band. I mean. Um, I think if I did one on here, I'd probably get uh, get nailed, like content ID'd. I, I try to do public domain stuff, and sometimes I even get content ID for that. But there's certain songs I wanted to play tonight with the slide guitar that I couldn't do because I, it would get content ID'd. Like I, I, I play this song called uh, Guitar Rag. It was the, one of the first ever recorded blues songs by Sylvester Weaver. And it's a public domain song. It was done in 1923. And uh, every time I put it up, uh, YouTube content IDs it. And I fight it, and I always win. But it, you have to sit there and wait 30 days. Like If you do it on a live stream, they can take your live stream down. But I, I've got a recording of it on here, and that's going to be on the album. Do you ever predict that thousands of people would listen to your music or, or your songs when you... Did you ever predict that thousands of people would listen to your songs when you were young? This YouTube channel is pretty amazing. Uh, no, I. But when I started this channel, I had no expectation that it would um, get um, big. If, if you can call thirty-four thousand big, <laughs> um, like I, it, it was really good validation that I, you know, learned the stuff pretty good. What is the best beer for a bluesman nowadays? Oh well, um, I'm a beer snob, and picking your 
picking your favorite beer is kind of like picking your favorite kid or something. But uh, I, I tend to be into, you know, porters and things like that. Um, like, I, I think my favorite of all time is actually Sam Adams Oktoberfest, but that, that only comes out, you know, part of the year every year. It doesn't even taste like the German ones, but I, I just like it. The, uh, I love the video that you did where you were uh, visiting all the Blues players' grave sites. Well, I, I didn't visit them. I put pictures up of them. But I, I visited the graves of Robert Johnson and Blind Willie McTell. Um, I saw that out in Thompson. I didn't get footage of, of McTell. Well, no, no, no I, I did actually, and I deleted it by accident, so it didn't make it into the the dock. Yeah, but I, I do have a picture of me at Robert Johnson's grave. I'll have to put that up on my uh, little community post thing or something sometime. You get to see my my big, uh, you know, wind blown afro. <laughs> Sir D D Bernstam again, seven bucks. Come on, people! All Ed is asking is a reasonable seventy bucks for two hours of work. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for, for for not leaving the house, you know, that's that's pretty good. Seventy bucks. I mean, uh, I, I I would charge more for that, like you know, at an actual gig where I have to go there and set up stuff, but. I I've walked out of places with like 20 bucks and uh been really pissed. <laughs> We're at 96. Let's see. Let's see if we can throw me over 100 here. W would you blues us with a song? Yep. Yeah, I'll probably play one more before I get out of here. Yeah, it's been about two hours. We're going to do this again next week. I'll probably, uh, I'm not sure what uh, what the theme is going to be. Tonight was slide guitar. That's all left in my account, uh, JD, 299 Thank you, Thank you, sir. Well, you, you didn't have to do that if that's all you had. <laughs> if, you, if you can't afford to give me a super chat, you know, don't worry about it. <laughs> Um, you know, I do, I'm a broke motherfucker. I'm a musician, for Christ's sake, you know. Uh, 99.16, okay, that's good enough. That's close enough to 100. All right, let, let's let's figure out a song here. I wonder if I can find the lyrics to Come On In My Kitchen. If y'all would give me just one second, I'm gonna go. Um, I'm gonna go uh, do some, um, you know, bathroom duties. Um, so <laughs> take a number one, and um, I'm gonna grab. Um, I'm gonna see if I can grab the lyrics to uh, "Come On in My Kitchen." We'll play that.
All right, I'm back. Now, where did that song go? All right. I got to take down my big board here. I tried to teach y'all some cosmology, and y'all y'all just didn't want to hear it. Y'all just wanted to hear a bunch of music. All right. Well, I got to turn my guitar mic back up too. set up here I think we're gonna use a capo for this one let's see yeah this this is not one I play regularly so if I fuck this up it's on y'all take two on that. I don't like this slide on this finger. Can't reach. We're going to use the, the trusty old uh, deep socket here. When a 
woman gets in trouble, everybody throws her down. Looking for her good friends, none can be found. You better come on in my kitchen, cause it's going to be raining out Well, the winter time's coming. You know it's gonna be slow Can't make a winner, baby Now that's dry so long You better come on In my kitchen Cause it's going to be raining out cold I hope that sounded good. Let's see, let's see what kind of uh, comments and reviews we got here. Let's see. Bitcoin is good to pay tips. I didn't know you could pay with Bitcoin on <laughs> on YouTube. Oops. Excuse me. Blue Shift. That that could be your band name or album name. Ha ha ha. Well, well the uh, the band that I run right now is called Edward Phillips and the Blue. And I've also just uh, recently joined another band called the Martin Phillips Blues Review. Uh, agreed on uh, agreed on adding a few licks of uh, gain in the studio. Oh, was it not loud enough? Yeah, let me see here. Just about got this thing maxed out. Lower the guitar mic, please. Oh, okay. I had the guitar mic too hot. Yeah. I had had it turned off and I turned it back up. <laughs> Sorry about that. Let's see. Uh, that's cool. You remember that guy's song that requested it on the super chat? Yeah, this is one I should have had lined up. I might do a full um, show on Robert Johnson. Just do a bunch of Robert Johnson songs. You know. Thank you so effing much, Edward. Well, thank you. Greetings from Finland. Uh, it it knows. It, oh, it it is six a.m. here. Nice way to wake up. Yeah. Scandinavia is like um like I, I was really intrigued when I saw a video of Scandinavia like a like some um there was like some town in Finland they went through I believe it was like the uh like the capital there it might might have been like Helsinki or something <laughs> and um like I, I saw no um just obnoxious advertisements anywhere it was like a there was like a pizza place and it just said pizza like no, no, no billboards, like no, nothing like <laughs> that'd, that'd be the kind of place I'd want to live. Let's see. It's been fun. Talk to you later. Craig Robinson. Uh, all right. Talk to you later. Come to the next one. We're going to do another one Wednesday, hopefully. Edward Blues Phillips. <laughs> now, Alan is my middle name. I've, I've always wanted somebody to ask me for an Alan key. You know, because I've got him on me. Like, you have to have him for guitars and stuff. You know, it's like a, hey, hey, Edward, this, this orphanage is going to blow up if you don't give us an Allen key right now. And I can be like, um, well, Allen is my middle name. You know. <laughs> Let's see, uh. For some other time, you got, uh, you got to move by Mississippi Fred McDowell. I was thinking about doing Hello Little Schoolgirl or you know, something by him. I, I don't think I've done any hill country songs, but I, I don't know. But Baby Please Don't Go might come from the hill country. It has that sound. Or, you know, might maybe uh, do something by R.L. Burnsides or something like that. You, you ever heard that R.L. Burnside song? Like, Motherfucker stole my check. Stole my check. 
Let's see. This guy sounds like a, a synthesis of black and uh, black blues and Americana. That, that's pretty much, you know, I've, um, I, you know, I've, I've done old country songs on here too. Uh, I, I've got T for Texas on my Patreon. I've, I've done a couple of bluegrass songs here and there. I, th- I think, I think most of those are on, are on uh, the uh, Patreon channel. My bro country persona is named Merle Terp- Terptude. <laughs> Mine is Wank Hillians. Let's see. Guitar mic was actually good. I was wrong. Sorry. Uh, do you use compression? Well, not on this rig I got here. It's pretty much unprocessed. Like I, I just got a an interface here with a bunch of volume knobs on it. There's no no EQ, no nothing you can do. I I can't get any of my uh, compression plugins to to jive with OBS. So yeah, this this is pretty much uh, just raw. Let's see here, Mr. Johnson. Did did you really trade your soul, sign your name on a contract to give you something more? Deviled inside, you feel so lost, riddled in the cold. Feelings never love you, even when you wrote. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've sold my soul to to Google, YouTube. So they gave me a lot of views. They they didn't help me play guitar better. I'm from Detroit. Is there any uh, Detroit or other northern blues? Uh, well, John Lee Hooker was based in Detroit. That, that's the main guy. But hell, y'all got Motown up there. That's that's badass. Let's see. Uh, you're an artist for sure, bro. Make it look effortless. Nice to meet you, Wank. Yes, I, I am. I am the great Wank Hilliams, king of bro country. I know every Blake Shelton song in the book. Same as the devil, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, Google pretty much, yeah. <laughs> or like same as like Soviet Russia or something with their uh, <laughs> their uh, censorship uh, policies, you know. Let's see, Wank Gilliams is hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> That, that's that's gonna be that's gonna be like my stage name if I ever do like um like like a bro country band or something. About Robert, let's see, wait, what? Uh, message retracted. Oops. Thank you for all the work you do on this, Ed. Um, I will be here next Wednesday. I'll put you in the budget. I appreciate that. Yeah, thank y'all all for uh, the super chats y'all sent and. Um, and the kind comments and enjoying this. This is the first time I've done it with this equipment. Got a much better camera going on here. Uh, much better audio. That's that's good. And uh, yeah, hopefully I can do this every week and improve on it. You know, maybe I can get like some slideshows going and uh, give you all a boring history lecture or you know. <laughs> y'all a little relativity lecture improvements haven't gone unnoticed like i've noticed my voice getting getting a lot better over time you know singing is not something i ever uh you know focused on a lot i i just uh you know the, the the singing that I know is just from having to be the singer in the band for every band I was in for 25 years. I would love a a, a history slash cover stream. Yeah, I'd, yeah, yeah. I want to like integrate like some um, d- just a little bit of a uh, history into these things. Like I I didn't bring any notes tonight. I, it would have been nice to give like some history of slide guitar. I I can tell you that it. It originated in the Hawaiian Islands in the 1800s, and it came over here. And uh, there was one guy, I think his name was uh, what, Ho, o, Hopi or something, to, like a Hawaiian guitar player. 
that got really popular here in the 20s and they they picked up on that uh, a lot of the blues people picked up on that like ho opi or something like that and i, I actually i believe the uh the uh, steel bar actually uh predates the bottleneck the bottleneck was a blues thing like when they started this stuff in hawaii they were yeah they were using steel bars and what they were doing eventually evolved into uh you know the the pedal steel and all that like they use in country music but uh yeah the the early 20th century this uh hawaiian slide stuff got really popular in the united states and for some reason they picked up on it with um you know in blues uh especially in the delta Let's see, where, where are you where are you planning on getting a Lion and Healy guitar before you got it, or was it just um, that it was available? I yeah, it, it was it was like cheap, and that's why I bought it. Like I I, I couldn't get a Stella from the same period because they they all cost a bazillion dollars now, like a old Sears guitar, you know. I, I got that thing for like two hundred and fifty bucks. But when I got it, I found out why it was so cheap. They had busted it open and, uh, you know, put a pickup in it. You see, are you familiar with uh, Rich Brotherton? Rich is a, a really good guitarist from your neck of the woods, Augusta, Georgia. He, I'm not familiar with him. I, I mean, um, like, I, I don't really uh, know as many musicians in this area as some people do because I, I just i'm not a networker <laughs> I, I just know like a small circle of people that i've been playing with forever like it's been kind of like a revolving door they you, you know they they kind of play a while and they leave and they come back and stuff like that you know but when i started playing live um i mean uh oh I, I was probably about 14 or 15 playing in a like a concrete block uh shitty dive bar <laughs> and like three people and then, then after that i got into punk which is a completely different set of musicians so you know they, they don't hang out with the, with the normie musicians but i mean i, I know most of the uh most of the guys that play in aiken i know or have met um a lot of the guys in augusta i don't know so I don't I don't hang out in Augusta unless they pay me to be there in a bar. <laughs> Let's see. He's done a lot of work with Robert Earl Keane. I have heard of him. When I was twelve, I, I used Bic lighters. Oh, I don't know what, what this thing is. Some cheap gas station lighter I bought. You talking about um? Is a like a slide? I heard Hendrix uh, used a one of those uh, Zippo lighters to do the slide part on all along the watchtower. See, Rich is from Augusta, but he's uh, been based out of Austin, Texas, for about twenty years. But well, yeah, yeah, that's the live music capital of the world. I mean, I think they even have like health benefits and stuff for musicians. <laughs> kind of wish I lived there. Of course, I. Uh, you know, I saw a lot of Austin City Limits uh, growing up. They they used to have some really cool people on there. You know, they had Stevie Ray Vaughan, and uh, they they had Bill Monroe on there a time or two, I think. See, that's because you're busy playing, yeah. <laughs> now, here, here's the real lighter right here. This is what I use for cigars. If it'll light, well, is it out of gas? It would work really good on a crack pipe if it would light up. You know, the butane lighter, you um, light your cigars with it, you toast them and then smoke them. Is it over here? No, we got gas in here. There it goes. But uh, yeah, I think we're about to call it a night. It's been, um, yeah, two hours, almost two hours and 15 minutes. I'm happy with that. We'll try to do another one of these at 9 o'clock uh, next week on Wednesday. I want to thank you all, all for showing up and uh, listening to my stuff and um, liking it. And 
super chatting and all that good stuff. So he says next next time break out the antique Gretsch. I I think uh, with the uh, stars on the neck. No, that that's that's a lion and Healy. I, I've got a Gretsch uh, electric, like it's a newer one. Don't do crack, he says. I, I, <laughs> I actually used to have a bass player that did crack, and he, he did it in front of me. <laughs> oh God, He's like fucking bass players, man. Um, let's see. Thanks for two hours of pure pleasure. See you next week. Well, I'll see y'all next week too. John Paul, love your brother too. What should an artist do to find his style? Uh, listen to lots and lots of uh, different kinds of music. Don't just stick with one genre. I, I meet too many people who have like just just been playing nothing but radio rock their entire lives, and I have to give them like music lessons when they join my damn band. <laughs> just uh, you know, look for influences all over the place. I I look for influences in a uh, early American music, and um, I. I, I like a lot of uh, jazz and blues and uh, psychedelic rock, which is kind of weird, but that, that's what I kind of got into in high school. Uh, classical, I got into that. Just, just uh, yeah, just give a listen to everything you can, you know. Blues is all about feeling, and you got it. I have shared your videos for Finnish guitar groups as uh, as example about the blues guitar picking. Oh well, thank you for that. <laughs> Pretty flattered by that. Yeah, let's see the the uh, Lion and Healy next week. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll bring it out and do something on it. I think it's hard to play. <laughs> All right, I, I'm going to call it a night, y'all. I'll, I'll see y'all next time. Uh, y'all have a good one. <laughs>